Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. For the Record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealerships serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Face and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977. Coming to you live from Radio Canaan Studio. For the record. For the record. For the record. Here, Here from, from your, your government, government officials, officials, independents, and the opposition on issues that matter to you. For the record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. For the record. For the record. For the record. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. 1 800 534 8255. Your calls, your input. This is For the Record. And now, your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome to For the Record. Today is Friday, the 7th day of December 2000. And 18, I trust that everyone had an enjoyable evening and that you're all raring to go today. Uh, on my way uh, down this morning uh, when driving, I was just thinking about how great it feels to be getting up and doing something that you love and that you enjoy doing. And I trust that many of us have that feeling this morning. I know that we are not in a perfect world and um, not everyone's uh, issues are the same. Some people have uh, issues that are unavoidable and uh, others um, have clear sailing. So while we would encourage people when they wake up in the morning and we hope and trust that they're raring to go to do whatever it is that they love to do. There are others who are not in that position, and we certainly empathize uh, with those. But those of you who are in a position to to determine some of the things that you do and that you uh, th- that you should do and you shouldn't do, I would say to you: try to wake up in the morning being enthused, uh, being happy that you're above ground to see another day and committing to use it in the best way that you possibly can to help your fellow um, brother or sister um, as well. So with those encouraging words, I want to say thank you for allowing Radio Cayman and by extension for the record into your homes, into your vehicles as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands, into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. For the record, as you know, is a show produced by the staff and management of Radio Cayman and it is geared towards keeping you abreast of issues as they arise and play out on the local, regional and international scene. I am your host, Art Connor, and you're welcome to join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Our phone lines are always open. There is always someone out there waiting to take your calls, in here waiting to take your calls. Normally, it is that beautiful radio voice of Miss Susan Watson. You can call us on our toll-free number provided courtesy of Flo. That toll-free number is one 800 5348255 you can also call us on 9498037 and 9496990 you can also email us at for the record that is one word for the record at c a n d w dot k y what's up us on 9253261925 3261 leave us a text message or send us a voice note, the contents of which will be played during the course of the show. And of course, you can follow us on YouTube simply by subscribing to Radio Cayman Live Stream. Now, the holiday season is coming up, and it is not possible for me to buy a Christmas gift for all, for everyone, each individual listener who 
listens to For the Record or uh, to Radio Cayman. So I'm going to do my best in terms of giving you a present this morning. We have no guests in the studio, so we're going to have open line for the entire show. Gives all of you an opportunity to call in, uh, to express yourselves on uh, anything that you want to talk about, as long as it's uh, legal, uh, as long as it is okay to print, as long as it is okay to be aired live on radio as well. You can talk about any subject that you wish to talk about. You will not be curtailed. You won't be said, told to, well, you know, we're talking about this particular topic this morning, so uh, we want you to concentrate on that. So for the entire two hours, because we have no one in the studio unless someone shows up, we're going to have open line for you. That will be the extent of my Christmas gift uh, to you, and I trust and hope that you appreciate it and that you take advantage of it as well. Now, uh, I'm going to start the conversation by talking about today being Friday the 7th, and since the UK is probably about, what, six hours ahead of us, somewhere around there, the constitutional talks between Cayman Islands representatives and the uh, UK Foreign and Commonwealth Office, represented by uh, Mr. Ian Henry, I think, Ian Henry, would have been having discussions on our Constitution. We haven't received any feedback yet on that. Uh, a little bit too early to receive any feedback, but I'm sure that uh, we will get some feedback as to the progress or what has taken place in those talks. Not certain of the te details that we will get, and you would have heard me on this show also express uh, my view that uh, and my hope that the proceedings would be recorded verbatim um, as well as uh, we should have uh, electronic uh, voice recordings as well. Uh, we need to, to keep them for posterity, but we also need to keep them so that whenever, because there, there will always be, I didn't say this, I didn't agree to this, somewhere down the line, and we will have those records to show what was said by whom during the discussions, just like we have those records. Um, I'm not sure how many people take advantage of it, but I certainly, uh, when trying to hold people accountable, uh, will refer to the records that we have when the negotiations were going on for a 2009 constitution. And uh, so it is our hope that we will hear exactly what has taken place. Nothing should be kept from the people of the Cayman Islands because at some point in time, the people of the Cayman Islands, either through their representatives or directly, will be asked to give their nod of approval to any agreements that have been made in relation to our constitution between the Cayman Islands representatives, and those of the UK as well. Uh, I also noticed in uh, one of the Bermudan uh, newspapers, uh, Royal Gazette, yesterday, that uh, the minister uh, in charge of the cabinet, or his cabinet minister, pointed out that they did not appear in front of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the UK Parliament uh, when they were invited or uh, request, uh, invited to appear. And their reason for not appearing in this particular instance is because there is no need, they do not report to the UK Parliament. That is the stance that they have taken in relation to that. Therefore, they did not appear in the... Uh, Foreign Affairs Committee hearing to talk about the relationship between the UK's Foreign and Commonwealth Office and the overseas territories in this particular case, the case of Bermuda, simply because they do not report. 
to the British Parliament. They feel their parliament, to a certain extent, is supreme. What they do, they do it based on their constitution, and there is no need for them to report to the UK Parliament. I know that that has not always been the position of the gov- of governments of Bermuda. Um, I do know, uh, for instance, that in the case of uh, when Dr. Ewart Brown was the premier of Bermuda, that they did appear on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, we know the, the huge saga with the Turks and Caicos Islands and the representations that were made to the UK Parliament and to the UK Foreign Affairs Committee and the actions and the investigations subsequent to those appearances led to the UK being placed under administration, their constitution to an extent being uh, suspended and uh, the UK taken over. That uh, was the second time that that occurred in the Turks and Caicos Islands as well. But the um, the Bermudan, current Bermudan government feels that they, there's no need for them. They're not obligated to report to the UK parliament. And as a result of that, they have not um, done so. Um, you would have heard Mr. Kenneth Bryan speak about the fact that there will be a meeting of the Leg- of legislators to talk about certain OECD um, initiatives. And uh, there is a statement from Cayman Finance on uh, um, the issue of a substantial presence which will affect uh, the uh, Cayman Islands and uh, companies registered here in the Cayman Islands, all the overseas territories as well, including Bermuda. Uh, Yesterday I saw remarks made in Bermuda in relation to the whole issue as well. And uh, during the course of the show today, I will read you uh, what Cayman Finance has put out in relation to the... um, to this uh, substantial presence as well. So I want to remind you, no guests in the studio. Phone lines will be open all day. You can call us on a toll-free number provided courtesy of Flow. That toll-free number is 1-800-534-8255. won't cost you a penny if you call on that number. You can also call us on 949-8037-949-6990. Those two uh, will cost you. You can email us at For the Record. That is one word, For the Record, at C-A-N-D-W dot K-Y. Um, you can WhatsApp us on 925-3261. And, of course, you can follow us on YouTube, but you won't be able to communicate with us on YouTube. Uh, you can just follow us. But uh, we certainly welcome you to call in, uh, have a conversation uh, with us. If not... I am prepared to talk for the two hours and I will be shifting gears like uh, one of those tractor trailers with about uh, 15 or 18 gears forward (laughs) as well. So please stay tuned. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, the conversation will continue here on For the Record. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the historical vignette series sponsored by Cayman National Bank. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. The Cayman Islands, he hath founded it upon the seas. The coconut industry on the sister islands boomed between 1890 to 1915 with annual exports exceeding 1 million per year. In 1906, the industry peaked with the sister islands accounting for the entire export of the Cayman Islands. A coconut disease had previously killed off all of the trees in Grand Cayman. The industry was so successful that the government of the day went as far as to impose a special export duty. However, on Friday the 13th, 1915, 
2015, a hurricane of unprecedented severity devastated the island of Cayman Brac, rendering most homeless and decimated 98% of the coconut trees on the Brac and 40% of those on Little Cayman. To add insult to injury, the coconut disease that struck Grand Cayman would soon arrive in the sister islands. During the 1920s and 1930s, efforts were made to revive the coconut industry, but the efforts were modest and the industry failed to reach its previous level of prosperity. Information from this historical vignette was sourced from Founded Upon the Seas, a history of the Cayman Islands and their people by Michael Creighton and the New History Committee. Radio Cayman's Historical Facts Vignettes are proudly brought to you by Cayman National with branches on all three Cayman Islands. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. It's more than what we do. It's who we are. We were your official bank of the quincentennial celebrations in 2003. We were your bank of the year four times. We were voted as the inaugural top employer in 2010. We were the inaugural business of the year awardee in 2017. Who are we? We are Cayman National, your local bank, proudly serving you for over 40 years. It's because of you that our journey continues. Since March 2004, West Bay Pharmacy has kept their doors open to the local communities, even before, during, and after Hurricane Ivan. At West Bay Pharmacy, our staff provides so much more than pharmaceutical excellence. From the moment you walk through our doors to completing your cash out, our staff will have put your health care concerns at ease. We would like to take this moment to thank our loyal friends and customers. To us at West Bay Pharmacy, our patients are our primary concern. We provide thorough background checks and precise calculations to ensure your medical safety. Thank you for being a part of our family and for choosing West Bay Pharmacy, where we care about your health. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. You remember the sale at Vamp Motors? Yeah, the your sale, your choice. The one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features. Yes, it's still going on. But now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself. While they still have so much to choose from, save big during your sale, your choice at Vamp Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back, add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice. Because you know what you need and Vamped Motors will help you drive it home. Vamped Motors on Walker's Road. I am worried about my employee's health insurance. Are there any companies out there that I can rely on for great coverage, affordable payments, and who will work to make the switch as easy as possible? Or am I asking for too much? You sound like you need Fidelity Health. At Fidelity, they offer great coverage through a highly rated and trusted carrier. Payments I can afford and with no on-island deductible on all the plans they offer. Best of all, they offered my company 50% back on the first month's premium. This is too important. Today's the day I'm switching to Fidelity Health. Make the easy switch to Fidelity today and get 50% cash back on your first month's premium until December 31st. Call 949-7822 to make your switch now. Stay connected and enjoy your favorite holiday moments with Flow. Make Christmas memories great with the best phones at amazing holiday prices. Get the Samsung Galaxy A8 from $43.25 a month or the S9 from $70.75 a month from Flow. Sign up for Flow Quad Play to share up to 50 gigs of data and 5,000 calling minutes. It's amazing value and great gifts for loved ones or yourself. Plus, plenty of chances to win Flow holiday prices. So make it Flow for everything mobile this Christmas. Visit discoverflow.ky for more. Terms and conditions apply. System one noted. 1-800-534-8255. 
What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you. For the record, with your host, Arrett Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. No guests in the studio this morning, so we're going to have open line all day. We have one caller. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Um, This morning I have three things on my mind. Um, The number one being there are people out there who are sick, who need medicine, who need, you know, they see Christmas coming, they can't afford to buy a present for even their loved ones. So those potential employers out there, please consider giving somebody a job, even if it's for the holidays. But at least it will give them a sense of, you know, being back into the community and, and being able to care in the holidays. Okay. And, yeah, Carla, and you, you, you're you aware of the NICE program that is being um, operated by, um, uh, funded and operated by government in terms of those persons who are unemployed and uh, giving them an opportunity to work as well. I think they're getting uh, something like about $10 an hour and $12 an hour for supervisors. I am aware, and I think it's commendable. Mm-hmm. I know that it, you know a number of people have signed up, and I think it's awesome, which brings me to the second point. We sometimes are quick to bash government, but we also have to recognize that they are trying. They are trying to do things. They are trying to help people right. in as much as they are able to. Um, and the third thing that I wanted to mention is to say, you know, some of us that are employed, some of us that, that, that have a, a kind of plan for the holidays, we are blessed. And if we are able to reach out to that neighbor who is unemployed mm-hmm. and, you know, maybe... Maybe they're sick. Maybe we can volunteer to pay for their medicine, or maybe we can volunteer to pay for the doctor's visit. You know, kind of be be our brother's keeper if we are able to. Yes. So, yes. so today I'd like to encourage each and all of us to please try and share. It's not just you know going out there and paying paying two hundred dollars on a gift. You know, there are other ways to use those two hundred dollars. So today I want you to think about that, please. Okay. Thank you very much, Carla, for that. I want to really, really applaud you, and, and uh, you know, for making such a statement. Um, you know, we try to encourage it here, and uh, there are many uh, people who do so, including uh, you know, religious organizations and everything. But sometimes, uh, just the um, the regular uh, John Doe or Jane Doe do not. Uh, necessarily uh, do that and we really need everyone to step up to the plate uh, you know pay it forward uh, assist someone who may be um, in need you want to give people what they need not necessarily what they want help them in in those ways as well as she spoke about you know uh, uh, e- even even transporting them someone who has to go to the hospital may not have a ride or whatever you know, take them there, or you may go to the hospital and you see someone who's there and need a ride home, you know, do that as well. But yes, this is the time of the year to do that. And we would encourage people, don't wait until Christmas to do it. We should do it all all of the time, but particularly this time of the year when, you know, people will see others celebrating and having a joyous time. And because of their uh, particular situation, they're unable to do the same. So we need to do whatever we can, and I really want to applaud that caller for that. Let's go to the next caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, I think that caller may have hung up. So let's talk about, while we're talking about the uh, holiday season, let's talk about some of the notices that need to uh, that are going out there. As you know, um, local Cayman beef um, and... Uh, as well as pork and other things are in demand during this time of the season. And, of course, the Department of Mental Health has put out um, uh, a bulletin in relation to the inspections and a reminder for the inspections as well. And uh, I must say that over the years, no, we have not heard anything about 
people selling contaminated uh, meat here in the Cayman Islands. All Everyone has their own supplier that they go to, and those suppliers have their regular customers that they supply as well. In most in many instances, uh, their orders are oversubscribed, so there's not enough meat uh, to um, be provided for everyone. So when I get an opportunity, I will uh, read from the DEH's bulletin in relation to uh, the meat inspections. And this certainly will make people feel more comfortable, much more secure in terms of buying local produce. Uh, we have one caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? You hear how you hear how, how my voice changed when you call in? You know, it, it's a spice. I hear it. Good morning instead of good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the call just dropped. That was me earlier. The oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Um, I just want to say that um, I'm getting ready to do my little Christmas drive for for some of the homeless people and some of our senior citizens. And I got my first donation yesterday. And um got a couple of promises, so I'm looking forward to um, doing something in the community for the holidays. But I know one out there who's interested in trying to help, they can contact me at 928-0995. Repeat, repeat it again, uh, very slowly, Nine, repeat it again. 928-0995. Okay. Oh, see, uh, I want to hit on the uh, nice program for a second. I'm not here to discriminate it. I'm not here to fight against it. And I don't want no one to interpret my words wrong. I'm just wondering, when we put these guys on the road and we got um, 17 and 18 guys in one spot trying to do something, how in the world can they move their arms to use a material rake when they're all so close together? Where is the supervisor supervising these guys? If they're going to do a little project on a certain little area, I don't know why they would have 15, 18 guys standing in the same location. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, no, mm-hmm. no disrespect to them, because then I think it's a bit congested. And I'm quite sure if you're walking on the strip of um, Newlands here and you've got several different stops to, to do certain things, why not spread these guys up? Why you have them all at one location, look like to me, and then take them to the next location? You spread them out and mm-hmm. the other supervisor supervisor go back and forth checking to make sure that everything is in order yep yep the optics the, the optics itself make it uh, you know you get if you don't know what's going on you get the feeling that there's nothing for them to do so they're just crowded in one spot there was one uh, government department and I won't mention it because they have shown improvements in terms of what they do but there was one government department where uh, you would see people just standing around as well as a matter of fact uh, one of my friends has a um, uh, a saying that it takes, I think, about uh, three of it took about three of them to change one light bulb. Um, so the optics are really not that good sometimes. Yes, and um, you know, and the guys are peeling the sidewalk. The uh-huh. sticks are longer than them, and they're there pushing the stick, but not looking behind to see what car is coming good, good point. or what truck is coming behind them. So good they, point. they need to be very extra careful. Yep. And I'm I, glad that they got something to do, mm-hmm. but oh, see. If we can find jobs for these people every year for two weeks and three weeks, why don't they go back into these same guys they got there and see who wants to go and work permanently somewhere else within the island? This is a way of getting these people started to get them back into society to work with companies Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. other businesses. Yeah, yes. I'll leave that with you. I'll probably call you back. Thank you very much, Carla, for that. And I think I have about one minute that I can add to that. I I noticed that they're being careful in terms of laying out the the safety cones when they're painting the sidewalks and and, and things of that nature. But if we have that many hands on deck, it may not be a bad idea to have someone there with those um, reflective vests on and with a flag in their hand directing the cars because those cones alone won't stop cars from coming in there. Not even a person standing there at the end of the day, if if there's a car that goes out of control, can stop it. But at least if someone is there directing the traffic, because you know, in other, in many other jurisdictions, and in particular in the United States, you are required to slow down when you see those cones out there where people are working. I am not sure whether or not there is any 
legal requirement here for people to do it or, or if you simply do it based on the fact that you, you're using your common sense and you realize that people are working on the street and you should slow down. But it would be useful. Just take one of those guys, put them there with a the flag, despite the fact that you do have those cones out there to ensure their safety. Better safe than sorry. We're going to go to our 8 o'clock news. Several people we know are holding on after the 8 o'clock news. We're going to take lots more calls because no one in the studio. So until 9.30, we can talk. My Christmas present to you. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back immediately after the 8 o'clock news. Thank you, Mr. Connor. And studio time now by Price Wright is 8 o'clock. Price Right is Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore, making your dollar go further with huge savings and no membership fees. Get more of the things you use every day at the right price. But it's not just grocery and health and beauty. Price Right has a full range of products from office to automotive, patio furnishings to kitchen appliances, and even electronics. And since warehouse prices mean savings for you, everything is priced right at Price Right, Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore. Your community. News and information. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. With your latest news, I'm Carsley Fuller. In response to global developments in financial services, the Cayman Islands government publishes three bills, which it says further strengthens compliance with international standards. Radio Cayman's April Cummings has more. The company's Amendment No. 2 Bill 2018, the Local Companies Control Amendment Bill 2018, and the International Tax Cooperation Economic Substance Bill 2018 were produced following the Ministry of Financial Services consultation with Cayman's local financial services industry, Cayman regulators, the OECD, and the European Union. The Financial Services Ministry also joined the Ministry of Commerce to consult with Cayman's commerce stakeholders. According to a press release from the Ministry of Financial Services, these bills fulfill Phil Cayman's commitment to the EU to have legislation in place by the 31st of December 2018. The bills will be debated in the Legislative Assembly shortly and, if passed, are expected to go into effect in January 2019. April Cummings, Radio Cayman News. In other news. After a five-year hiatus, the Overseas Territory's Long Service Medal Award ceremony is back. This year, some 90 officers across the police, prison, and fire service were recognized for decades of service. You have persons who have attained 30 years of service, some who have attained 25 years of service, and some who have attained 18 years of service. In the special constabulary, we have some who have attained nine years of service. That's Inspector Ian Yearwood, aide de camp to the governor, who says some of the men and women who were rewarded have invested their lives into their professions. For them, they've re- attained that. And it's also for the young persons who are joining these organizations to aspire to reach this sometime. The recipients were presented their medals at Government House on Thursday. In regional news, Royal Caribbean expects to bring some of its largest ships to Galveston, Texas, after investing close to $100 million to build a new cruise terminal at the port of Galveston. The president and CEO of Royal Caribbean International writes, quote, when we're investing this heavily in the construction of a terminal and entering into long-term lease agreements, then that usually signifies that we'll be bringing our ships, such as the Oasis class. The 200,000-square-foot terminal is slated to open in fall 2021 and will be the third cruise terminal for Galveston, which is the fourth busiest cruise port in the country. Just shy of one million people will board cruise ships from Galveston this year, and the port is about to see its 10th millionth passenger since it began cruise operations in 2000. Now with a check of international news, here's the BBC, who will take us out of the newscast. I'm Carsley Fuller from Radio Cayman's Newsroom. BBC News with Neil Nunes. The Interior Minister of France, Christophe Castaner, says the authorities will show zero tolerance towards any violent radicals planning more yellow vest protests on Saturday. He drew a distinction between what he called extremist groups set on toppling the republic and peaceful protesters whose anger he said he understood. The Chinese telecoms giant Huawei has criticized as unreasonable Canada's arrest of its chief finance officer, Meng Wanzhou, which was carried out at Washington's request. Chinese media are portraying it as part of an attempt to contain the global expansion of Chinese technology companies. 
Meanwhile, the foreign ministry in Beijing says it's concerned at reports that Japan wants to ban government purchases of equipment from Huawei and another Chinese multinational, ZTE. Zambia's constitutional court has ruled that President Edgar Lungu can stand for a third term in office in elections in 2021. The judges ruled that his first term couldn't be considered a full one as it lasted only 18 months. Yemeni government officials have said the international airport in the capital Sana'a could be reopened if planes are inspected first at government-held airports within the country. The proposal was made on the second day of peace talks between the government and the Houthi rebels who control Sana'a airport. Italy's far-right interior minister Matteo Salvini says he's pleased that Médecins Sans Frontières is to end its migrant rescue operations in the Mediterranean, at least for now. Mr. Salvini said it would result in fewer attempted crossings and fewer deaths. The South African government has suspended the chief executive of the state-run nuclear company, Nexa, and replaced its board of directors. The energy minister said Nexa had disobeyed shareholders and there had been financial irregularities. BBC News. Access. Information. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. <laughs> this Christmas, Kirk Freeport is wishing everyone peace, love, joy. And $40,000 in prizes. Win one of the multiple $5,000 and $1,000 cash prizes just for shopping at your favorite Kirk Freeport store. Purchases of $100 U.S. before noon on Christmas Eve qualify for all remaining prize draws. There's even a Rolex watch prize draw on January 2nd. And loads of other great prizes. Peace, love, joy, and the island's biggest Christmas sweepstakes. Only from Kirk Freeport. Full details on KirkFreeport.com. Merry Christmas from Kirk Freeport. Matt Brown and Rita Estevanovich star in the Cayman Christmas Comedy Show. A gift from the CNCF to you. Yay! Christmas Comedy Show. I am excited. Well, I don't want to see it. Too bad. You're in it. Me in a show? It's the bestest, most festivous Christmas show ever. Coming to your district between December 11th to 16th. Visit Facebook slash Cayman Culture for all the details. Yes, yes, yes. I am going. Definitely I am going. Without community service, we would not have a strong quality of life here in the Cayman Islands. This is why the John Gray High School Leo Club, combined with the Lions Club of Grand Cayman, Dart, and former members of the Leo's Club, are uniting on Leo International Day for a huge community beach project. Saturday, December 8th, to the 7 Mile Public Beach at 7 a.m. and help assist the Leo International Day Public Beach Project as they help to clean, restore, and paint two of the cabanas on our beautiful beaches. Community service. Community service is the way in which we ourselves grow and develop. In financial news, shares rebounded in Europe and Asia today as worries over U.S.-China trade friction were calmed by conciliatory comments from Beijing. Keeping score, Germany's DAX climbed 0.7% to 10,884, and the CAC 40 in France advanced 1.3% to 4,840. Britain's FTSE 100 jumped 1.6% to 6,809. The Dow future contract fell half a percentage point to 24,783, and the contract for the S&P 500 lost 0.6% to 2,676. Looking at Asia's day, Japan's benchmark Nikkei 225 added 0.8% to 21,678, and Australia's S&P ASX gained 0.4% to 5,681. South Korea's Kospi rose 0.3% to 2,075. Hong Kong's Hang Sen gave up 0.3% to 26,063, while the Shanghai Composite was flat at 2,605. In energy, U.S. benchmark crude fell 12 cents to 51.37 a barrel in electronic trading on the New York Mercantile Exchange. It dropped 2.6 percent to 51.49 a barrel in New York. Brent crude used to price international oils dipped 7 cents to 59.99. And in currencies, the dollar rose to 112.82 yen from 112.80. The euro strengthened to 1.1376 from 1.1345. 
Kirk Home Center is your holiday season headquarters. From tabletop to seven-foot-tall Christmas trees, tree skirts, rugs, garland, and wreaths, to traditional lights and icicle lights for indoor and outdoor use, and LED outdoor scenic spotlights. Ornaments like shatterproof balls and treetop stars, and holiday accent pieces like candles, diffusers, and nativity sets, tablecloths, glasses, mugs, and more. Get it all from Kirk Home Center, your holiday season headquarters. Healthcare Pharmacy in Governor Square and Grand Harbor is now fully stocked with the best from Hallmark. This means Christmas cards, gift wrap, gifts, photo frames, soft toys, toys for boys and girls, and toys for babies and toddlers. For the love of your life, Healthcare Pharmacy is stocked with fragrances, cologne, and perfume collections. For those who like to spoil themselves, pick up a spa gift bag with all the goodies in it. Don't get caught empty-handed this Christmas. Fill up that space under the Christmas tree. The help of Healthcare Pharmacy, now in Governor Square and always in Grand Harbor. The facts on domestic violence are widely misunderstood. According to the Center for Disease Control, Harvard University, and many academic studies, men and women are equal victims in domestic violence. Even more understood is that in two-thirds of domestic violence incidents, women hit first. It's time to change the narrative. Remember, a healthy relationship will never require you to sacrifice your friends, your dreams, or your dignity. Stop the slap, stop the cycle, stop the violence. The Stop the Slap campaign has been proudly sponsored by Cayman National Bank. Stop the slap. Stop the cycle. Stop the violence. I need a bank that is convenient for me. What do you mean? I need a bank that has easy-to-find locations and plenty ATMs when I need cash on the go. Oh, well, that's easy. You need to bank with Cayman National. They have seven customer service centers and 22, I mean 23 ATM locations. The newest one is at the East End Post Office, and I hear there's more to come. Well, well, sounds like I need to bank with Cayman National Bank, the convenient bank, because they seem to be everywhere. Yeah, that's true. Cayman National is everywhere. Surely, they are Cayman's convenient bank. Kim and National Bank, we're here for you. Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery, creating elegant bathrooms with European style fixtures and fittings. Plus, a good morning. Time now for the latest weather report. Current temperature is 82 degrees, relative humidity is 82%. Barometric pressure 30.10 inches and rising. The wind is northeast at 18 knots. Overnight low temperature was 76 degrees. Synopsis indicate moderate to fresh northeasterly winds and rough seas are expected across the Cayman area for the next 24 hours as a cold front becomes stationary across the Cayman area and the associated high-pressure system builds over the southeastern United States. Radar images show scattered showers in and around the Cayman area, which are drifting towards the west-southwest. Now the forecast for the Cayman Islands for today, calling for partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of showers and temperatures will rise to the mid to upper 80s. Winds will be east to northeast, 15 to 20 knots, and seas will be rough with wave heights of 4 to 6 feet with higher swells likely along the west and northern coast. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of late night showers. Temperatures will be in the mid 70s. Winds will be east to northeast, 15 to 20 knots, and seas will be rough with wave heights of 4 to 6 feet, with higher swells are likely along the west and northern coast for tonight as well. And small craft should exercise caution over open water for today and tonight. High tide will be this morning at 11 minutes past 10, low tide this afternoon at 413, and a high tide again tonight at 915. The sun will set this evening at 5.46 and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.48. And the outlook is calling for a decrease in winds to become moderate east to southeasterly from tomorrow afternoon and to become light by Sunday as the high-pressure system weakens as another cold front reaches the Yucatan Peninsula by Sunday evening. update after eight is brought to you by brand source home gallery creating elegant bathrooms with european style fixtures and fittings 
Christmas is coming early this year at Brand Source, just in time to spruce up your home with a fresh new look for the holiday. Come early morning, Saturday, December 8th, for the best discount. Save big with 25% off store wide from 8 a.m. to noon on appliances, mattresses, bathroom fixtures, vanities, custom closets, and kitchen cabinets. From noon until close, get 15% off. So come early and save more. Saturday, December 8th, at the pre Christmas sale event at Brand Source Home Gallery, Industrial Park. Good morning, and time now to take a look what's happening traffic wise. Steady traffic in some sections of Crew Road, other section busy traffic. Traffic also busy coming from the east on Shamrock Road, with slow moving traffic. Also on the Linford Pearson Highway, traffic busy. Steady traffic coming off Bobby Thompson Way. Light traffic on Owen Roberts Drive. In and out of Georgetown, traffic flowing moderately on the Westway Road in front of the Ritz. Traffic is moderate in both directions. From the Westway four-way stop, traffic moving light to moderate. Edward Street, moderate flow of traffic. And on North Sound Road, traffic is moderate in both directions. That's the very latest on your traffic. Join us again at about 10 minutes after 12. We'll update you traffic-wise. Have a good morning and drive safe, Cayman Islands. Getting ready for Christmas is all about the finishing touches. The icing on the cake. The table neatly set. Decorations specially placed. And gifts thoughtfully wrapped. All to share with those we love. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Brit K, where people come first. Brit K's offices close at noon, December 24th and 31st. Visit BritK.ky. At KFC, we believe you don't have to share a last name to be a family. Whether it's an office party, holiday fete, or family gathering, enjoy KFC's fresh, hand-breaded, finger-licking good chicken. The KFC Festive Feast includes 10 pieces of original recipe or spicy chicken, creamy mashed potatoes, tasty coleslaw, and warm biscuits. KFC's holiday catering menu includes buckets of hot wings, sweet chili wings, or chicken tenders. KFC, it's finger-licking good. New stock has just arrived and more is on the way at Dollar Dollar Super Buy Variety Variety Store. Store. Number 12 Plaza Venetia, North Sunway. Christmas decorations, wrapping paper, paper, gift gift bags, bags, gift items, toys, perfumes, handbags, home decor and so much more and all at great prices. While you are there, step over to number 8 Plaza Venetia and see what is trending at at Babe's Teens. Lovely Christmas dresses and outfits for all your Christmas photos, baby items, clothes, blankets, baby bags, toys. Toys, dresses, shirts, pants, jeans, pajamas, shoes, and more. Dollar, Dollar Super, Super Buy and Babes, Babes to Teens, Teens are now open Monday to Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 946-8157. The management and staff of Dollar Super Buy Variety Store and Babes to Teens wish you a Merry Christmas and God's richest blessing for the new year. year. CUC advises customers in West Bay between the Hell Gift Shop and Hell Road East to and including Dill Lane on Reverend Blackman Road and South on Town Hall Road to and including Billy Manderson Drive that they will experience interruptions to their electrical service on Wednesday, December 12th between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Areas affected on Hell Road include Fountain Road up to and including Agua Lane and areas affected on Town Hall Road include Billy Manderson Drive and Sanchez Villas. Motorists are asked to drive with caution when utilizing Hell Road, Reverend Blackman Road, and Town Hall Road, as CUC will have a number of vehicles and personnel in these areas. CUC apologizes for this interruption, which is necessary to upgrade line hardware and provide our customers with safe, reliable, and efficient power. For more information on the outage and areas and streets affected, please contact CUC's customer service team at 949-5200 or email service at cuc.ky. In local sports, one of Cayman's local football clubs picks up a professional coach taking its dedication to developing the next generation of footballers to new heights. Ben Pugh is formerly a lead youth development phase coach at Ipswich Town FC and has over 12 years in youth football coaching. Coach Paul Biles, head of Academy's youth program, shares Coach Ben's new responsibilities. 
He is responsible for our youth football curriculum. So he is basically responsible for the technical development of all of the players. And that means that he sets out the framework. He manages the framework. He ensures that all the coaches are trained to the standard to deliver the curriculum. And then he also directly coaches some of the teams. For more information about Academy Sport Club's youth programs, you can email admin at academysportclub.ky or call 925-5032. And in international football news, Arsenal says the club will talk to the players who were recorded apparently inhaling nitrous oxide in a London nightclub. The Sun newspaper published footage of a number of players appearing to inhale the substance, also known as laughing gas. The paper said the incident took place in August before the start of the season. Arsenal says, quote, the players will be spoken to about this and reminded of their responsibilities as representatives of the club. Nitrous oxide is legal and normally used in dentist offices and hospitals. It is illegal to supply or import it for personal use. Initiating system for information that matter for the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. Uh, no guests in the studio this morning, so we have open line for the entire show. We, I think we have a few callers on hold before I go to those callers. Uh, no callers at this point in time. One of our um, listeners has written in and said, um, uh, asking us to kindly continue to ask persons using uh, the roads to slow down and respect other drivers. We see a lot of disrespect going on on the roads. We see a lot of crazy driving going on on the road as well. And that person has said, darting in and out of uh, tight spaces on the roadways is not good driving. Um, and it certainly isn't. It's not good driving. It is not safe driving. And it endangers the lives of other persons as well as your own. If you don't haven't placed a value on your life and you don't, you don't place a value on your life, then at least place a value on other people's lives uh, who are out there on the roads as well. But too much crazy driving. It is good to see that the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service, they, they were out there during the holiday season uh, enforcing the laws. Uh, we understand that they can't be everywhere. Um, I would say um, there are mornings you want to, if you want to be able to catch speeders and tickets, four o'clock in the morning. When those individual cars on the road, when they zoom by, sometimes they got to be. Sometimes they're doing at least sixty miles an hour in a forty mile an hour zone, and and probably about fifty miles an hour in a twenty five or a thirty mile an hour zone. And it's usually very uh, very few cars in on the road that time of the morning. I don't know why they're going so fast, but that would be a good time for the police officers to be out there and nab some of those uh you know in the mornings as well. But again, you know, please be 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 uh careful out there on the roads and drive safely. Speaking about slaughtering, the Department of Environmental Health reminds the slaughtermen, butchers and livestock farmers of the procedure regarding arrangements for the inspection of locally slaughtered animals in the Cayman Islands during the upcoming Christmas season. And like I've said before, that um, never really heard of any uh, outbreak, any, any issues regarding slaughtered meat here in the Cayman Islands. Yes, uh, we do get the occasional fish poisoning, and I have been uh, the on the receiving end of fish poisoning as well, but uh, environmental health can't really do too much about that. Uh, if you rely on the um, the, the uh, fire ants and if you rely on the copper to see if it changes and all of that stuff, some people have all of their various re uh, uh, ways of detecting whether or not fish is poison, but sometimes you just can't avoid it. Um, so, but we've never heard of any outbreak in relation to slaughter, locally slaughtered meat. Um, they use some terminology here, anti-mortem inspection, which is the examination of food animals prior to the slaughter is conducted by the veterinary services in the Department of Agriculture. Um, slaughtermen are advised to contact the DOA. The number for you to contact is 947-3090. And then there's also post-mortem examination, which is the inspection undertaken immediately after the slaughter as well. And I'm sure that all of those persons who are involved in the slaughter and the selling of local um, 
meet during the Christmas season are all familiar with this procedure. They know how to walk the walk in, in relation to this, but the reminder is still put out there for you by DEH, and we certainly appreciate them for that. Uh, more than likely, all of the uh, orders have, if they haven't already been filled, will soon be filled for the Christmas uh, meet as well, and I'm sure that distribution will take place soon. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Mr. Oregon. How are you this morning? Good morning. I'm fine, and how are you? I am fabulous. Great, great. Good to know. Good, good. Um, one comment on on the uh, traffic or the speeding. Yes. Is the school zones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that someone, some child or someone is going to get run over in those zones because... They do not, and I'll stress that, they do not obey the speed limit in those areas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Something like the flashing, that is. I have had cars go across me like I was stopped. Yes. And the only time that they take into consideration the speed limit is if they see a patrol car sitting on the side of the road. I think that the school zones should have the cameras, and they should be monitored heavily, and tickets issued or license pulled. Yep. Um, enough, enough, enough said on that. That wasn't my call, but um, when I heard you debating that or saying that, I had to um, voice my opinion on it. Yes, yes. I, I think that that's it. Uh, go, go ahead, sorry, sorry, caller. What, what I was um, actually calling about. Um, I want to thank the Georgetown Hospital and Health City mm-hmm. for the marvelous work that they're doing. Uh, my son had a near call to death, and they were excellent. I mean, they worked around the clock on him. And hats off, I would say, to young Dr. Andrew Brown, because he kept us informed. He was there all the time. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show you that not everything that they say that is bad is bad because a lot of people bad mouth the health services authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I got nothing but good praise for them and for Health City because without them, my son would have died. That that is certainly um, a a good a good testament uh, to both of those. Um, organizations. And I, I don't know if you uh, listened on Wednesday, but I also spoke about uh, the uh, Health City and its reputation regionally um, and internationally as well. Um, it wasn't uh, publicized much in the local papers and maybe because of uh, privacy issues, um, uh, but I read it in the um, Antigua newspaper where their Minister of Education was um, air ambulance here. Uh, okay, about a no, week I, ago as well, yeah. I I missed Wednesday show, but I can I can say I mean and to to be honest, um, Doctor's Hospital was also instrumental in in his um, recovery as well. They they did um, an exceptional job as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the two the two that really really stood out because he was only over at Doctor's Hospital for a moment when uh, he was sent over to health services. And they worked around the clock, I mean, around the clock on him. And then uh, he was sent then to health city then, like uh, four days later. And they took over and they did the same thing. And I can safely say that, you know, he's alive and well. He's not out of the woods, Mm -hmm. but... He's alive and well. That's good to know. That's good to know. And I, uh, we will certainly continue uh, to keep him in our prayers as well, caller. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, next caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, O.C. How are you? I'm fine. Good morning. And, and yourself? Oh, not bad. This is not to do with beef, but <laughs> <laughs> it is to do with some more Christmas decoration. That's I'm okay. I'm very brief because I'm on my way up to an appointment. Okay. Central West Bay is the first 
place that tourists see when they approach the district. Um, next to the gas station, there's an overgrown property. I know it's private property. And it's right up, like what we would say, in the door mouth of two MLA's office, mm-hmm. offices. And they don't seem to see that. It is not high bush or anything. Mm-hmm. I checked, and I know that the owner lives overseas, but they have relatives here. Um, it needs to be um, cleared. Because what I'm saying, um, near the Centennial Towers, as you know, that is the district center, right? Right. And... Um, it doesn't give a good image. And now that they're cleaning up, I know that they went, they did something to it, but it's not enough. Um, I don't know if anybody from any government department that is responsible for that or knows about it should encourage them um, to do it. Because, you know, as you know, certain departments has power to deal with when people don't clean their, clear their land and all like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. not only for Christmas. That has it's to real. be cleared and if, anyway because right now, in that area, the Miramali Road has become one of the most tourist attractions there. As you know, Seven Mile Beach has been um, closed off, mm-hmm. you know, when the Old West Bay Road. The old Road, yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to leave that out there, and I just hope that some of those MLAs that have offices in that um, area could take a look at it as well, and they could try to do something because it doesn't only affect people coming in there, but their offices... It doesn't give a good image either, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. being so nearby. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I will hang up and leave you with that. Thank you very much, Carla, for that. Folks, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have open line here for you to call in and uh, express your opinions, uh, provide any information that you may want to provide as well, as long as it is legal to print or legal to be aired on radio. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. I remember playing at Seven Mile Beach as a boy, eating mango by the sea, learning how to snorkel. My mother, she worked so hard to provide for our family so that we could have those moments. Seeing her age has been tough. That strong, capable woman, now in need of daily support, it's my time to be strong for her. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy understands the importance of the careful decisions you make every day for your family. Our staff work towards healthcare excellence and providing the most current and up-to-date training with pharmaceutical care so you can feel confident in knowing that your family is safe with the right medication. At CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, we take care of your health. You remember the sale at Vant Motors? Yeah, the your sale, your choice. The one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features. Yes, it's still going on. But now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself. While they still have so much to choose from, save big. Drink your sale, your choice at Vant Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back. Add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice, because you know what you need and Vant Motors will help you drive it home. Vant Motors on Walker's Road. Hopscotch Entertainment presents tribute to two of the island's greatest bands, Memory of Justice and Humble and the Meek, featuring special guest Freddie Jackson. Alongside special guest Naomi Cohen, this December 7th, 8 p.m. sharp at the Lion Center. Admission is free. Admission is totally free. Featuring special guests Rex and Impulse Band, Lammy Seymour, Edward Solomon, Regeneration Band, Molly and Brian, Gerald Rankin, Dexter Bodden, and Fire Squad. Donations are accepted. 
Sponsored by the Ministry of Culture, Miracle Brokers, Digicel, Radio Cayman, The Lobster Pot, JN Money Transfer, and the Cayman Islands Music Association. Freddie Jackson, live in concert, Friday, December 7th at the Lion Center. You are my lady. System 1 loaded. 1 800 534 8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1 800 534 8255. Waiting to hear from you for the record with your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. No guests in the studio, so we have open line this morning. We have no one on. The line, I want to read you uh, a release issued by Cayman Finance in relation to the um, substance, economic uh, substance issue being raised by the OECD. It says, government today released the draft International T- Tax Corporation Economic Substance Bill 2018 a law to provide for an economic substance test to be satisfied by certain entities and for incidental and connected purposes. The draft bill is scheduled for debate in the Legislative Assembly later this month and is expected to be passed to take effect by 1st of January 2019. It is the latest in a series of steps by the Cayman Islands to meet its 2017 commitment as an inclusive framework member under the OECD's Global Base Erosion and Profit Shifting Initiative, and in particular, uh, uh, Base Erosion and Profit Shifting Action 5. It also reflects Cayman's commitment to meet new European Union requirements modeled on uh, the BEPS Action 5. Cayman Finance is pleased that the Cayman Islands government is moving to adopt the new global standard that will also be applied across the other 123 BEPS inclusive framework members' jurisdictions. We have always demonstrated the commitment to be a transparent and compliant jurisdiction, responding positively to internationally agreed standards. Those who establish Cayman structures do not do so to engage in base erosion and profit-shifting activity. They do so because Cayman is efficient, neutral, is is an efficient neutral hub with key expertise in handling complex, um, complex transactions. Cayman and its service providers are used to constantly evolving to meet global requirements, and we are confident that this latest development will be no different. We anticipate that our sophisticated clients will adapt as required and take this in their stride. Um, and take this in their stride. Um, it is worth noting that all of Cayman's main competitors third jurisdictions are in a similar position as BEPS inclusive framework members. We understand from the Cayman Islands government that they will, in the near future, be issuing for consultation related guidance notes, which will provide additional insight into how the draft legislation is intended to operate in practice. We encourage our members to familiarize themselves with the bill, and once the final form is passed into law, we recommend that our members seek Cayman Islands legal advice on what it means for them and their clients. And that's coming from uh, Cayman Finance. Now, this substantial presence, I, I will try to explain it to you the way that I understand it, and I'll give it to you in my layman's terms, and I may get it wrong. And if I get it wrong, then someone please call in or write in. But a substantial present means that there are many companies registered in the Cayman Islands that other than being registered here and maybe having meetings here, uh, may have one employee, sometimes no employee here, uh, but they use the Cayman Islands registered company to transact business for their larger entities 
and as a result of that may not pay uh, have to pay taxes in certain instances. So the OECD, OECD is now going to put things in place that requires those companies who are registered to have some substantial presence in the jurisdiction. That is having offices, probably having um, you know a, a minimum or a minimum amount of staff members and various other requirements. This could prove good for the jurisdiction because it would mean more uh, jobs. And they can't just, they're not expected to just put any Tom, Dick, or Harry, or Jane into those positions. Those persons have to have expertise in whatever area that is required, you know, for that. Um, so that that is basically my understanding of it in terms of having a substan- uh, substantial presence in the jurisdiction. Now, I will read later on from some comments made in Bermuda in this regard, and it seems as if Bermuda is pretty optimistic about the legislation, and they have shared similar sentiments in terms of their uh, companies over there and their, their uh, providers being able to um, to adapt to changing conditions um, as well. But uh, before we do that, uh, uh, someone, um, uh, Ms. Vernice West, wants to send birthday greetings, a good uh, birthday shout out to her good friend, uh, Miss Barbara, on her birthday today. Now, uh, I didn't get Miss Barbara's um, last name, so I'll just have to say Miss Barbara on, on, unless I get something that. Uh, identifies Miss Barbara in terms of her last uh, name as well. And um, with that, I am going to read from the Bermuda comments in this regard. And I I think I have about five minutes before we go to the break. So hopefully. Um, This is uh, an article written um, by the uh, chairman of the law firm of of uh, Conyers in Bermuda, and it is entitled, We Can Adapt, and uh, his name is Christian Luthi, L-U-T-H-I, Luthi, that's the way I'll pronounce it anyway, says, Bermuda's insurance and banking industries have little to fear from eminent legislation to address European concerns over economic substance. This is the view of uh, um, the chairman of the international law firm Conyers, Dill and Perman, who is confident the island can adapt to the upcoming new rules. However, another source, a retired industry veteran who asked not to be named believed that many of the island's captive insurance could struggle to meet the substance test. The Bermuda government has committed to enacting new laws by the end of this year. Sounds familiar? Came on doing the same thing. To keep Bermuda off the European Union's list of non-cooperative jurisdictions. The object is to end the practice of international companies, and this is where he explains it better than I was able to explain it to you before, says this, the object of this is to end the practice of international companies cutting their onshore tax bills by diverting profits to offshore entities that lack economic substance. The gentleman goes on to say that Conyers was one of the industry stakeholders to have worked closely with the Bermudan government over the past year on developing draft legislation. So this, they saw this coming down the pike, and they developed draft legislation in the meantime to address it. And I believe that the Cayman Islands government did the same, you know, as well. And uh, you now heard that we will have a special meeting of a legislative assembly to um, for these bills to go forward. Goes on to say, many Bermudan entities already meet the requirements. Uh, indeed, for certain of our key industries, 
such as insurance and banking, the EU has expressly recognized the substantive nature of those industries in Bermuda. That is for insurance and banking because they already have um, um, substantial presence um, in, in there. It is expected that for such entities, compliance with the, their existing regulatory requirements will be deemed to satisfy the new economic substance regime. Bermuda has only four banks, all of which provide services to residents and employ local people. Most of the island's international insurance and reinsurance companies can also point to their local staffs, including executives and underwriters and locally held board meetings as evidence of substance. Remember now, there are some companies that basically just have that um, nameplate. Um, I think they call something else uh, uh, during the firm and uh, those other movies. I just have their nameplates on a particular uh, building represented by particular law firms and may not necessarily have uh, any presence or substance, uh, you know, within other than the the actual existence of the company here. However, the substance argument may be more difficult to make in the case of captive insurers, according to a source who worked in the industry for more than four decades. Captives insure the risks of their parent corporations and some write third-party business as well. Hundreds of captives are, dom are domiciled here, that is speaking of Bermuda, and are, are overseen by captive management companies. The captive managers do not make underwriting decisions. In my experience, the premiums are decided by the captive owners, the source said, and I'm not aware of any captives that have claims teams here. Bermuda's legislation will be based largely on the European Code of Conduct Group's scoping papers on economic substance published in June of this year. The paper referred to intra-group captive insurance as an activity likely to need further analysis. So one of those that they're going to be targeting is, uh, is going to be uh, those. However, the bulk of the island's captive insurers, uh, captive business is focused on, on North America, and for many of these task, tax avoidance is not a charge that can be leveled against them. Of course, because they're U.S., and there is a different standard for uh, uh, Americans uh, to a certain extent. That's my, that's my comment. Um, as Mike Parrish, head of the business development for uh, Marsh Management Services, Bermuda said during a captive focus session at last month's Bermuda Executive Forum event in London, most captives take the um, 953D tax election, meaning their companies are subject to U.S. taxation. So that's why uh, they don't have that problem. Um, we have to take a commercial break. When we return, I will continue to read from this article as well. So please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. You need Fidelity Health. At Fidelity, they offer great coverage through a highly rated and trusted carrier. Payments I can afford and with no on-island deductible on all the plans they offer. Best of all, they offered my company 50% back on the first month's premium. Make the easy switch to Fidelity today and get 50% cash back on your first month's premium until December 31st. Call 949-7822 to make your switch now. 
It's Christmas fun for all with the Flow Quad Play Bundle for a year and weekly draws for Samsung soundbars. To win, sign up for any Flow service, including our new Quad Play Bundle. Top up $25 or more or pay your bill on time and in full. Our Quad Play Bundle is filled with the fastest broadband, HD quality Flow Evo TV, excellent mobile call quality, and home phone with up to 2,800 international minutes. With over $40,000 in prizes, that's fun for all with Flow. Visit discoverflow.ky for more. Terms and conditions apply. Retain your peace of mind by installing a reliable generator, knowing that your family is safe and secure during a power outage. At Corporate Electric, we care about the well-being of our customers and their loved ones. We are the official distributor of Kohler SDMO generators in the Cayman Islands and can conduct a free assessment of your house to suggest the perfect fit. Call us at 946-2277. Visit our website or the Facebook page for more details. I remember playing at Seven Mile Beach as a boy, eating mango by the sea, learning how to snorkel. My mother, she worked so hard to provide for our family so that we could have those moments. Seeing her age has been tough. That strong, capable woman, now in need of daily support, it's my time to be strong for her. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy understands the importance of the careful decisions you make every day for your family. Our staff work towards healthcare excellence and providing the most current and up to date training with pharmaceutical care so you can feel confident in knowing that your family is safe with the right medication. At CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, we take care of your health. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orrit Connor, continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. Uh, no guest in the studio, so we have open uh, uh, open mic uh, or open line. We have one caller. Uh, this article is still pretty long, so rather than continuing now, I will accommodate that caller first. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Morning, Mr. Osi. Mario Ibanka. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mario. How are you doing? Very good, sir. Very good. Great to see you the other night at the that wonderful function for retiring UCCI president. Thank you very much, and it was a pleasure seeing you as well. It was a great, great event, wasn't it? It was. It really, it really, really was. It was. It's yeah, historic. Yeah. Um, yes, and also I want to say um, publicly thanks to God for protecting us during the hurricane season. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're 2018 season has gone by, so we thank God for that. And also I want to wish you and all our listeners in these islands and around the world Merry Christmas and Happy New Year when it comes. Thank you. Same I to you, sir. To, to, Yes, sir. Thank you. I just want to make a, a couple of brief personal comments about the economic substance matter that you were just talking about. Excellent. Um, Excellent. Just very brief comments initially. Um, basically, um, I, I want to commend the government for being proactive on this. Um, like, you know, as you know, Cayman Islands, the Cayman Islands government has always been proactive and perhaps sometimes too proactive on some of these things. <laughs> um, but... You know that's the big world we live in. In you know it's it's the it's not right. It seems to be what's might so mighty. That's correct. Um, yeah. Our, um, Trump the the right and, and equitable stuff sometimes. But the, the question I have is in relation to the bill and this whole issue. Uh, there's a lot of undefined uh, areas, a lot of variables, mm-hmm. and of course with everything else, as you know, as as a as a senior uh, member of government for many years and civil servant, a lot of these laws and regulations, on paper, they look okay, but when you come to actually apply them and mm-hmm. understand them, yeah. is where the rubber hits the road, right? That's correct. So how are we going to implement this, this thing, and how is it going to work? Uh, it, it certainly could be beneficial in terms of creating economic substance if you have you know, new jobs and new careers for, for Caymanians mm-hmm. and those mm-hmm. legal residents, that could be a good thing. But, of course, some of these structures that are in place, um, you know, to do... The traditional economic substance in terms of bricks and mortar and overheads and, and staff sometimes is not is not practical either. So, you know, this is where we have to try to strike a balance. But in closing, I just want to ask a couple of questions. The United States has a huge um, company's business as well. Um, and in Delaware and other states, they have a lot of these uh, offshore, um, essentially offshore structures. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of them are about hundreds and thousands. They don't have any economic substance, really. They're just nameplates. Um, 
even less than what exists in Cayman Islands and the overseas territories is the UK, is the EU the Economic Union. Are they also going to blacklist the United States uh, if they don't have economic substance and all those structures? They never touch the U.S. and they, they not, you know, of course, the EU is not prepared to go up against the U.S. in this regard. So these these issues don't relate to them whatsoever. I know that's a rhetorical question that you're asking, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then also the City of London. I mean, they have. I'm sure they have a lot of these theme structures as well. Uh, is the EU going to blacklist the city of London mm-hmm. as well? So, I mean, this is where the whole thing is, is hypocritical, huh? and it, it makes people boil. And it, it, it certainly, in some cases, can incite um, very, very uh, antisocial and anti-Western um, and anti-capitalistic behaviors. Um, and, and this is where we have to try to strike the balance. So, again, I want to say that it has some benefit. Um, but there's a lot of undefined areas, and hopefully we can strike a balance and make it a win-win. Um, but Cayman certainly is leading, and has always led, and hopefully will evolve and 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 become stronger. But these are certainly trying times, and, and I'm disappointed to see the the EU position. And hopefully, if the UK can get out of the EU and and strike a balance and work with its partners around the world, including its overseas territories, we might be able to see some rebalancing of this, but um, let's just see how it goes. I just want to give you those comments this morning, sir, and I thank you for addressing this this morning and discussing it and talking about what Bermuda is doing and uh, I'm engaging the public on this important matter. Thank, thank you very much for that, sir. And, and if you get an opportunity, do read that um, article in... Um in the uh, in the Royal Gazette, it 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 it, it was almost um, confusing in a way or distracting because it says Bermuda has a substance problem <laughs> or something of that yeah. nature, and you know yeah. right away you you think it's an article in relation to something else, but yeah, uh, it's yeah. an interesting article and and uh, some of the things that you have articulated here now that person that individual the head of uh, Conyers. Um, uh, Dill and Perriman as are articulated in that article as well. So I'm sure you would enjoy reading that also, Mr. Mario. Yes, and I hope I hope also that Mr. Anthony Sabers will also comment again on this matter because he has similar views as well to, to what I have. Yes. Um, and, and so thank you very much, Dorothy. God bless and have a good day. Thank you very much. You too. Uh, next caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, we lost that person. So I'll continue to read. Uh, two calls, another one? Okay, N- next caller. Good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Hello, Mr. Uh Yes, good morning. How are you? It's good. Uh, it's Johan Moxham here. Just picking you up on some of the comments. Um, you know, again, government didn't really have much of a choice if uh, this now becomes the, 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 the global standard, but there's always um, consequences when you um, rush to pass legislation um, and there isn't. Uh, appropriate or accompanying sort of regulations that underpin mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. The, the legislation. Mm-hmm. You know, we're constantly trying to appease everybody. And the one thing that we can all agree on is that the goal post shift every 12 months. So Cayman will be congratulated for not making a blacklist and the government will take credit for that. But I promise you in 2019, there'll be a new blacklist for us to contemplate. Yes. And, and that's where I think um, we as a country need to really have a, a look at, at what we're what we're trying to do because make no mistake these initiatives are intended to shut down the financial services mm-hmm, mm-hmm, industry of the mm-hmm, Cayman Islands. Mm-hmm. There's no polite way of saying yeah. that. There's no way to hide um, or use pretty talk. They're going to continue to whittle whittle away and whittle away until there's nothing left. And again, you're absolutely right. But I think there comes a point where we as a country and our leadership need to assess all options. Um, before they capitulate and agree to uh, legislation, rules, regulations that really and truly they haven't effectively or appropriately analyzed. At the end of the day, there should be an economic impact assessment to mm-hmm. any sort of legislation mm-hmm. and, and, and its impact on us, on our um, government coffers and our general revenue because financial services is, is, is what pays most of the bills and drives development around right, here. Right, right. What I find really disturbing is it's easy for the EU, which is a mess, okay, there's a reason why countries are leaving, um, <laughs> you know, the, the EU, and, and let's just use mother as an example, um, 
But it, it seems easier to make Cayman, Bermuda, and the dependent territories, the Pokemon, instead of addressing their own sort of tax regime and, and laws and, and tax codes. That, that is an issue for them to decide. But what's worse than that, the dependent territories and offshore um, jurisdictions are bad and where, and where the, 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 the people that are responsible for their countries being without cash and everything else. But when you look at big, mighty America, Delaware in particular, North Dakota, Utah, um, Wyoming, Pardon? Wyoming as well. Wyoming. Yeah. All of these states, let me tell you, we're talking about economic substance and economic presence. It's as if Cayman and Bermuda and all of us that survive off of financial services, it, 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 it's as if we're the only jurisdictions that are in this game. Yet, Cayman has the most robust, most rigorous, comprehensive regulatory regime out of all of the offshore jurisdictions, and we get absolutely zero credit for this. And every year, we're continuing to chase our tails in the hopes that somebody will acknowledge what we're trying to do. At what point do we as a country assess all options and go, hold on, we're going to finally challenge this? If we can challenge the constitutional overreach um, um, that, that, that has occurred, we should be able to challenge or at least assess the options of any and all legislation that negatively impacts the financial services industry. Yeah, Mr. Moxima, uh, um, sorry I have to interrupt there, but we have to go to the 9 o'clock news. But uh, thank you very much. If you want to call back, please do that. But we have to go to the 9 o'clock news, and I apologize for that. Folks, please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. Satisfaction is guaranteed 24 hours a day, whether it's music or information. From Grand Cayman to Cayman Brack to Little Cayman. We've got you covered. You ever hear a thing like that? Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. Radio Cayman. Radio Cayman's newsroom. These are the biggest stories right now. In response to global developments in financial services, the Cayman Islands government on Thursday published three bills. It says the new bills will strengthen compliance with international standards. In international news, anti-government protests in France have, quote, created a monster, according to the interior minister. He's warning that, quote, radical elements could infiltrate planned, quote, yellow vest protests at the weekend. Tourist sites in Paris are to close on Saturday amid fears of further street violence. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has given an emotional farewell speech to her ruling Christian Democrats as she steps down as party leader. She says, quote, our liberal values must be defended internally and externally. She hinted that she was backing Annegret Kamp karrenbauer to succeed her, praising her electoral performance as chief minister of Saarland. Her chief rival in Friday's CDU vote is millionaire corporate lawyer Friedrich Merz. Those are your headlines. I'm Carsley Fuller. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. Radio Cayman. You can find us. www.radiocayman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Initiating system for information that matter for the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. No guests in the studio, so we have open line all morning. We have a caller on hold. Our caller has been holding for uh, a little while. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Osi. Good morning, sir. How are you? I just thought you may not have wanted to. Oh, oh no, call. no. We, 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 we want to have everyone uh, here. Sorry about Well, yeah. um, maybe you might give me a little time like they normally give Mr. Mark some whenever he calls. And, he just, <laughs> and he thinks I don't give him enough. So. <laughs> much time. I don't hope much time. He's a more important person than I am. Uh, every, everyone is important on this show, sir. Uh, it is important and essential that we remember when I say we, we Caymanian, when we keep saying we, 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 when we talk about Cayman, 
who are the we are we talking about? Who benefits from certain businesses and um, obvious beneficiaries from certain businesses? Mm-hmm. And um, and who doesn't really? Um, they, we may say yes, well, it's a trickle down effect in our society as we have it because we have no. It is very important we remember what I'm going to say. We have no factories. We have no really intrinsic businesses to show where all this money is coming from. You see a lot of people driving around in very expensive cars. And we see big houses being built on those. And we know that there are people here, and it numbers in the hundreds, who are earning huge salaries. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And a clique, a clique, um, again, maybe close to 100 who are earning humongous salaries. So the whole world looks on where there are mostly, in 99% of countries, there are factories. The United States, we keep belaboring and hammering at. They have gigantic factories. People on the ground working to provide and make this money. The bulk of this money comes from hard sweat, blood and tears, of workers who mm-hmm. are much less paid than those big people enjoying those humongous salaries that are here. And they are providing this money. The vast majority, even the IT world, because someone makes those computers, some factory worker. They are made by maybe 70 different factories, some of them all over the world. Mo- mostly, in, mostly in China, mostly in China and, and, and Asia. Huge factories in the United States. And some of those factories in China, they owned by American billionaires. And um, they, they also provide the, the brain work initially for it. And we have the Silicon Valley here mm-hmm. in California, which is a... Mm-hmm. So, so, so your point, your point is, Mr. Hurston, and, 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 and that... My inter- point is that people will wonder where this money... That's why we have these tax initiatives, but I want to get on so, so that people can understand. We moved away from businesses, the boat building and the circling and the men going to sea, working in these vessels and all that, suddenly into a world that the majority of the Emanians do not really understand when we say offshore finance. And it will never be really explained to us because you don't want the people really to know every intricate detail of it. You don't want that to happen. A few will get involved in it, and a few will be able to learn how it really works. Insurance, as we know, it's really a gamble. It's not like um, the other businesses. It's a gamble. Because they use the same mathematics as paramutual gambling, which is horse racing and so forth does. Losses are different. It's a completely different thing. I'm just trying to show what type of economy we're talking about when we say we. So therefore, we moved into this again. We know that people would be pressuring us. We would always be under constant pressure. From I noticed, I'll never forget in 1974, people coming in with the suitcases of money and being met by big bankers, big lawyers, big accountants at the airport because I said, well, we're helping to run a rental car business, my brother. And I, and I turned to him and I said, Ernst, one day we will pay for this. Now, um, moving on, today is 77 years. And we, we have to accept these things. We'll all be under pressure. Delaware is in the United States. They, they produce trillions of of, of dollars in value of goods. A lot of that money that's here in this financial world is from the United States. We all know that. But they have direct income tax here in Delaware. And they have corporate tax. They have all kinds of taxes that the government derives benefits from it. And the ordinary people derive a benefit from it. Those who work, those who... Anyway. But, but many of those have companies that. have uh, um, presence in other jurisdictions as well and in Europe and, and that is uh, a lot of times where they use the companies that are registered here for those purposes. And they well. pressure those companies also. We know this way that big bank, um, I can't remember is it UBS or something or HSBC, 
just paid some big fines against the United States government. And Deutsche, Deutsche, Deutsche Bank, I think. Uh, we, they... we don't, yeah, the German bank. We don't see these things. It doesn't come up in papers many times. Um, but there, every day there are people being arrested in the United States for, for the same thing, for tax evasion, tax evasion, every day. Mm-hmm. And the stock workers also are being arrested every day for the illegal work and corruption there. Insider it's, trading it's and all that big stuff. Money, yeah. mm-hmm. Big money bring corruption. So yeah. Bring it here, bring it down here. Thank you very much, caller, for that. Let's see if we can take the other caller before we go to a break. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, good morning to you, Ossie, and, and thank you for taking my call. And I, I want to thank you also uh, that you was helping with um, uh, Dream Show, as I call it. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, talk today. And um, I know I haven't got to speak to him yet, but I I... I have some concerns, and then I, I have some comment to me. Now, in the paper a couple of days ago, we seen where the um, some cruise ship companies had made uh, commitments, or so it is is written to us um, about building the dock. Mm-hmm. Now, if they go ahead and build the dock, and they build the dock for all that amount of money that they say that the dock is going to build be, or the pier or the piers mm-hmm. is going to be built for. How are we, I should be asking our representatives that is pushing this, how are we going to collect uh, $17 or, or $20 a head from each cruise ship passenger that they're not going to build a dock and turn around and pay the government 17 or or, or 20 dollars a head per i wonder if people is thinking about that I, I'm, I'm sure i'm sure caller that the uh the government in their negotiations with them have taken that into consideration i i don't think that we have been provided with all of the details of that agreement uh yet i know they never do Oh, see, we have to admit, we never hear the full details of anything that is going on in this island until it is already done or it's uh, it's already happened. Mm -hmm. Now, we have another concern of mine. I know it's all over the island, but, and I have to be concerned because this is where we live. We have down here in West Bay, mental people, some of them living on streets, on the street, some of them live in the combiners on the West Bay Public Beach. I didn't say seven miles, West Bay Public Beach. Some of them, one of them is living right out front in, on Mr. Graham Porch, Graham Ebanks Porch which is public for everybody to see. And she she has been living there, and we have four representatives. You never see them. You, you can't get to talk to them because they're in a meeting or they're, la- they're gone off to meetings. Now, if people is so concerned and our representatives are co- so concerned, and I'm not leaving out the churches. We got more churches than any other island, <laughs> and individual and individuals as well. Don't leave out the individuals. Also, we keep uh, harping on the fact that uh, you know people need to uh, sometimes do their share, reach out, uh, you know, as well. Why aren't the churches helping? At least giving some counsel to these people, counseling them. Uh, it, it, it's beyond me, and yet we call in ourselves a Christian country. Well, I'm sorry. I am sorry, and I, I got to a place now I don't care who likes it. This is a fact. If we're such a Christian country, why aren't people 
reaching out instead of ignoring the fact. And a lot of those mental people that are on the on our street, families receive money for them. They, they should put more in social services to investigate this before hand, handing out. And yet, these mental people are still out there by the supermarket and and begging, and they'll, they'll beg you for, for food and for cigarettes. Y- you know, it, 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 it's beyond me. Why are we continuing to call ourselves an, 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 a Christian country and we can ignore all of this that is going on in this little island? But Carla, call, call is, it, is it really correct to say that we're ignoring it? Or is, um, isn't there a situation where while you may want to have a 100% success rate, that that is actually impossible because, you know, sometimes you can only help people if they want the help themselves? No, but uh, what I'm speaking about, O.C., is that I know that uh, um, psychiatrists like Dr. Lockhart, been begging so to get something going that we can put these people that they can receive their right treatment and i think i think i think they have broken ground uh, uh, uh for that project that that's underway yes yes but they also taken away a lot of the land that they had promised to give him mm-hmm caught caught Caller, I'm going to have to interrupt you there because we have to go to a commercial uh, break now. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, uh, we, we have to go to a break. Folks, please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. You remember the sale at Vant Motors? Yeah, the Your Sale, Your Choice, the one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features? Yes, it's still going on, but now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself. While they still have so much to choose from, save big during Your Sale, Your Choice at Vant Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back, add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice. Because you know what you need and Vamped Motors will help you drive it home. Vamped Motors on Walker's Road. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. Did you know that recycling collection containers are located island-wide on Grand Cayman? The Department of Environmental Health Program is an integral part of DEH's waste management responsibility in the Cayman Islands. Start your recycling program at home today. Put your Type 1 and 2 plastics in appropriate DEH recycling containers at all Foster supermarkets, Kirk Market, or Harless Grand Harbor. Please keep the Cayman Islands clean, reduce, reuse, and recycle. For more information about recycling, go to www.deh.gov.ky. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orit Connor, continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. We're going straight to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning again, Mr. Wussy. Good morning again, sir. Good morning, sir. I just wanted to say what what you said there is, is quite right and understand the consternation in, in that lady's voice uh-huh, and uh-huh. who she is. And there, but the same thing happens to all of us. I often think about them and I see them. I know the particular people talking about, but there are kind of attempts to help them. And as you know, you're much more versed in law than I am. You cannot just possibly grab them up and take them in because they haven't. They'd have to commit some act of violence against someone before I believe you could do that and take them forcibly into, say, some into a mental home or something like that. I, I do believe, simply put, that about what it, it is. And they are doing things. Hard-working people, social services, are trying their very best. And it is a problem that we know people have tried to hide things. 
didn't want this to come out, didn't want them to be known, and they're not walking the streets or whatever. And, and then before that, they weren't that quite evident. But now it's different. Um, the economy sort of starts from certain sectors of society. What I was born to see was today, 77 years since the infamous attack on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, and um, Americans do think a lot about that. You know, if that giant sleeping giant hadn't awoken for the European theater of the war, as General Rommel said, if awoken a sleeping giant, that was Hitler, we know it would be a very, very different world we're living in now. We must be realists. If America hadn't got involved in the European theater of the war, it would have been a very different world that we live in now. I also... On Monday, will be 187 years since the first elections in our island were held at the old St. James House, known as Peter Castle. Mm -hmm. And we know how very important those elections were, having the island then become our government being a um, bicameral system after that, with elected men meeting in one room, and the appointed magistrates, the original government, meeting in the room above it, same day, of course, and we understand what type of government it was from then on for six to seven years to 1898. We're almost fully self-ruled and self-governed. I don't think I'm making too many mistakes when I say that. So um, we have managed to handle more or less our own affairs for six to seven years in those hard days. And after that, we provided our own finances and economy for quite a while keep the country going and the people going. Now, of course, we have 125 different nationalities and 130. And the indigenous or um, Caymanians, um, generational Caymanians are outnumbered. So we have a very difficult situation. It's difficult for any government to balance. And I often wonder why the same people who often criticize our elected representatives previous to this election that they don't get together and do what's best and try and come together and make decisions together for the country. Now that that is happening, that they're being criticized more than ever for being too together and too... And, and, and I don't understand these same people who get crazy all the while and used to say that are now saying the same thing, criticizing them for being together, for agreeing, for deciding to put aside your own opinions that they had before and try to coalesce and try to get some kind of a coalition going to move the country forward in difficult times, as we saw with what you started out talking about, the decisions having to be made to compromise, because we, as a country, are moving to a new type of economy, as I hear it's the major part of our economy, that the majority of people, as I said before, I don't know, I keep repeating this, and I guess it's misunderstood, that the majority of people don't really understand what it's all about. So when we say we're pressing for this, pressing for that, and pushing forward and should wait and make decisions, um, we don't really know. So they're making decisions. We just have to hope it's the best decisions for us. We decided on this. We've moved away from the conventional type of economy into one that's very nebulous, and not understood by 90% of people. Caller, I'm going to ask you to leave us there uh, uh, for that. We're going to cut the calls off now because I want to really uh, continue to uh, read from this article as well because this, this information here will certainly help people to understand exactly what is going on with these uh, three bills that will be presented to our Legislative Assembly. And we're getting... Um, some comments from another jurisdiction that is dealing with it as well, and this is in the case of Bermuda, and these are the remarks of the um, the head of the law firm um, um, of uh, the the law firm. Conyers, Dill, and uh, and uh, Perman. Uh, so it goes on to talk about um, the fact that subsidiaries of multinational corporations who employ no one conduct few economic activities on the island 
and book significant profits derived from sales elsewhere are the real targets of the EU of the EU in this case. Many such entities exist in Bermuda. So Bermuda exists that they have such entities that exist there. Goes on to say uh, they contribute significantly to the island's prosperity, according to Bob Richards, the former finance minister. While such companies may not directly and individually employ people in Bermuda, collectively the administration of such companies does indeed employ many, many Bermudians and results in um, many Bermudians and results in the collection of millions of dollars of tax revenues by the Bermuda government. Mr. Richards wrote uh, that in an op-ed in the Royal Gazette in June of this year. Although the substance requirements are a European initiative, they are set to become a global standard as the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development has stated that its forum on harmful tax practice will eventually replace the EU's 2.2 substance regime. And then the um, head of uh, Conyers um, said that Conyers was one of the many stakeholders to have helped the government to balance addressing EU concerns with Bermuda's economic interests uh, within the new rules. And we heard about the activity here in the Cayman Islands and uh, what uh, Cayman Finance has put out in that regard as well. And I believe that we also have one uh, one more uh, that has been uh, press release that has been put out recently. I won't certainly get an opportunity uh, to read that to you uh, as well. goes on to say, a great deal of time and thought has been put uh, in by government and industry to ensure that the new law and regulations meet EU and global requirements while protecting Bermuda's interests and ensuring our business model remains competitive. Cayman Islands are uh, attempting to do the same. While this is a significant change that will affect a number of Bermudan domicile entities, it is important to view the legislation in its global context. The EU substance requirement, soon to be a global OECD standard, apply to all offshore jurisdictions. The Channel Islands, Cayman Islands, BVI, and many others are all in the process of now tabling a materially similar legislation with the expectation for all such jurisdictions that the legislation will be in place by the end of this year. David Burt, the Premier, has argued that the legislation is necessary for Bermuda to continue to meet global standards and added that it will be tabled in the ongoing uh, parliamentary session. Um, the, then the head of uh, Conyers said that the impact of the changes may not be all that bad. So he's pretty optimis- optimistic about that. He says, Bermuda and its business community have a long history of adapting to change and making the most of any opportunities it affords. As a strong and transparent jurisdiction, we are confident that Bermuda is well placed to manage the introduction of substance requirements. All Conyers at Conyers, we have already informed our clients of the pending changes with regard to substance requirements. We continue to be available to help them understand the requirements and meet their uh, obligations. The legislation is likely to add regulatory burdens and costs for both companies whose substance will be monitored and whatever public sector entity has the, that has the responsibility for doing the monitoring. Some have noted the lack of specifics, and you heard Mr. Um, Moxon speak about this as well. Some have noted the lack of specifics in the requirements in the EU's scoping paper, which, for example, requires, quote, an adequate number of employees with necessary qualifications and are an, an adequate amount of operating expenditure with regard to the core income generating activities. So that's a part of a subst- uh, substance, uh, uh, the presence, right? There will undoubtedly be differences of opinions over what constitutes adequate 
for different companies and different sectors, raising the possibility of legal challenges as well. One problem is that the requirements are vague, but there is no independent system to rule on whether jurisdictions have complied. This is uh, what a tax uh, policy consultant um, has said in that regard. Um, And he advised jurors on its substance legislation. And this person wrote that um, an article in uh, the Cayman Financial Review in that regard. That uh, person's name is Mr. Richard Theater. He says he's a tax policy consultant who advised Jersey on its substance legislation. He says the sole arbiter is the EU Codes of Conduct Group. And if it decides that a jurisdiction is not demonstrating sufficient commitment to economic substance in its laws, its enforcement, and its reporting, then that jurisdiction can be placed on the blacklist. He did not expect the substance rules to have the EU's desired effect. Studies into the reaction of businesses and investors to these requirements have found, and this is important, I'm going to read this again, studies into the reaction of businesses and investors to these requirements have found that rather than moving operations back to high-tax countries and facing ever-increasing tax bills, they will do the opposite and move more of their actual activities to low-tax locations to make it easier to demonstrate economic substance there. That is what Mr. Tita has said. This will be a huge problem for the European Union because when those economic activities are moved out, they do not only lose corporation tax, but they lose jobs, income, and employee taxes as well. So this is not all, and I'm saying this, this is not all doom and gloom because there is some positivity to come out of this as well because what it is what it is saying here that the history is now showing that when these new rules are imposed are superimposed on us that those clients who are affected by it do not necessarily pick up everything and leave and go back to those high tax jurisdictions, they also adapt and they also may take further measures to move more activity into those jurisdictions. So there can be a plus uh, from this as well. It is unfortunate that I am unable to read more uh, on this because we have um, um, a statement uh, released um, by uh, the Cayman Islands, uh, could be the uh, Monetary Authority in that in this regard. But unfortunately, unless uh, it is pretty long, and uh, we're not going to have time. But I think the the article, the Bermudan article, is uh, pretty upbeat about it, and they, you know, stand to be affected just as much, or maybe more than the Cayman Islands, um, as well. But we hope for the best, and I trust that when these bills are now being debated in our legislative assembly here and you listen to it either live on Radio Cayman uh, uh, 105.3 or if you listen to the uh, recordings in the night from the legislative assembly, that you will have a better understanding of what our uh, government is talking about and what our legislators are talking about. And hopefully, and I trust and I implore our legislators as well, get yourself familiar with this legislation and what it is all about. Do not go down there and just vote or do not go down there and start debating and talking about other things. Familiarize yourselves with this legislation so that you can have an informed intelligent debate in our legislative assembly so that your people that you always talk about will be able to understand what is going 
on. Folks, I want to thank you for allowing Radio Cayman and by extension for the record into your homes, into your vehicles, as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. I also want to remind you that we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. There is always someone out there who's less fortunate than we are, and I ask you to extend a helping hand to them. If you can't do that, then I suggest you donate to a worthy charity because we always want to consider those who need, not necessarily those who want or even those who crave. I say to you, have a great day. Continue to support your radio station, Radio Cayman, join Sterling, Dwayne, Ebanks at 12.15 for talk today. And as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands. For the Record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealerships serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977. Oh, Cayman. The voice of the Cayman Islands. Radio Cayman. Shining down from above. We love our listeners. Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands.